guys, welcome back to K-Pop 101. Today I'm here with another interesting topic that is mostly related to TV. So I'm going to talk about Korean survival programs and um, those show pros where you know people come out and compete. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this episode and let's get started. First up, I'm going to talk to you guys about the types of survival programs there are in Korea. Now you can divide them into genres. First of all, there's singing survival programs like Voice Korea, Superstar K, K-pop star, and there used to be um Ridian Tansei, which I don't know what it is in English. And then you have the special singing programs for celebrities like Manu Kasuta, or Bong Myung Gawang, you know, Puro uh, Myung Gok, etc., etc. But that's a little different because you can't just compete like because you want to. Next, you have the rapping survival programs um, like Show Me The Money and I'm Pretty Rap Star. And then you have the dancing, which is Dancing 9. I think that's about it. And recently, Mnet has added another uh, program onto the list, you know, regarding DJing and EDM called Headliner, which kind of long is still, but whatever. Okay, so these are the type of these are the types of survival programs in Korea, and as you guys can tell, a lot of these um, programs are similar to each other, but they're really different. First off, I'm going to start about the beginning. I would have to say that what really started off the fad in Korea is that Superstar K. When that first started off, people people were ecstatic. Like they basically, I think, imitated programs from overseas, but it was like the Korean American Idol. Oh, Korea got talent too. Huh, they got that here. Um, anyways, yeah, so they had a lot of people um, sign up for it in the beginning and a lot of people signed up considering it was the first um, series and it gained a huge success. There was a lot of drama involved and just the fact that, you know, people got a break away from idol rappers or idol singers and had a chance to look at people that are just, you know, around them in their everyday lives um, succeed and achieve their dreams it was really new and it was fresh. Now that it's what, Superstar K season 6 or 7, kind of getting redundant and people aren't as interested. Now as that happened, more um, singing programs added on like K-pop star. It was interesting in the beginning because SM, JYP, and YG decided to um, comp well, take part in the show and that never really happened. You never saw the top three companies uh, participating in something together. So that really helped add on to the, um, you know, trend. When you see Show Me The Money and I'm Pretty Rapster, you can see that this really varies on genre too. So when hip hop became famous and popular in Korea, they really used this to boost it up even more and it became a huge, you know, success as you guys probably know. Um, seeing that you see people from Winner, like Song Mino, um, compete in the thing too. The problem with that is though, um, it stops like 일반인들, like just regular people who aren't, you know, singers and rappers already from participating. It takes their chance away because a lot of famous people are, are like participating in the show. So, you know, the spotlight goes to Song Mino, Moon's Text, so, like all these idols that already have fans. So I thought that was a little bad thing, but yeah, that's not the point of this thing. I'm going to talk a little bit about the before and after that happens to these people that compete in these shows. Voice Korea, um, We Dan Tan K-pop star, etc, etc. Big people who participated in the earlier seasons, like in the beginning one, two like seasons, they kind of get forgotten. People, if the new season starts, they remember the Seroon they remember the new people. You know, they kind of tend to forget about the old people. And I think that's the only problem that you have with competing in one of these shows is because if the new season starts then you become forgotten so you really gotta you know be on spot with releasing albums as you go as soon as the season ends but besides that you know the people like actor musician uh Park Jimin, Lee Hai, Baekhyun, all of them are from K-pop star really successful Lee Sung Hoon he's a winner from YG now who else is there Seo In Go, Hoga you know, Bosco Bosco, Ulala Session. All of these people are from show programs, and it's really amazing how they got the chance to get their name out there to people through a short program like this. Um, for Show Me the Money, you have people like Jin Jin, Jin Dokke. Those people, Loco too. These people weren't famous, but they got famous during the show, um, season one and two. Then you have other rappers like Lil Boy and Hane, and these people who already had their famous and popularity, but they had the chance to show them to the 대중들 like 그냥 팬들 말고 to everyone out there 
So I feel like these show programs are really helpful. I mean, now I'm going to talk about the bad things like regarding editing. So there's this phrase in Korea called Angmae Pyeonjip and the biggest reason why this came out was because of show programs. Like if you watch dramas and stuff, you can say it's Angmae Pyeonjip or whatever, but and like you know, entertainment shows like Running Man they still edit it but you know it's what they intended and the people already know what's going on but when it comes to show programs people feel like it's what does that mean in English unfair it's just people feel like why does this have to happen to me you know I never like received any money from Mnet it's not like they're participating to get money right once they feel like things are unfair the word gets out they tell their friends and people know like that's devil's editing like I don't know why they would call it devil's editing but that's what they call it when it comes to my penzip I have a lot to say about it but I'm not gonna say much right now because there's no point I feel like if you decide to compete in one of these shows you have to take it for granted like you have to take that it's going to happen you know you can't stop them and they're trying to make the show do better like they're trying to make the you know ratings go up so that more people watch it because they want it to be fun and dramatic and sometimes maybe releasing every single bit of the truth can kind of like do bad for the show so I understand but I think it's got I understand it but it's stupid you know yeah so you see like in Superstar K some people like um write stuff on Facebook about how they feel and then they delete it but with rappers they're not gonna like, you know, let that pass. They always want to say what they want to say. So you could see in some of the uh, lyrics in some of the rappers' songs, right after Show Me The Money, they kind of diss out the program itself. I think that's really interesting. So as for now, um, it's been around five to six years since all these show programs began. And now that a lot of time has passed, people are kind of getting sick of it. Now they're chiryohe, the thing. Because there's so many different types and each season, the same thing happens, you know? You see people crying, telling them their stories about stuff. You see people going, yeah, yeah! Like, you see success stories, you see people saying, like, get to the program. It's really repetitive, and unless something new happens, I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. So the whole fad on show programs have been, you know, decreasing. But Mnet has done a significant job in trying to boost that up again with releasing new genre show programs like Headliner. I'm going to talk a little bit about this, but the DJing and the EDM scene in Korea, it isn't as big as hip hop. Like it's big as the people listen to the music, but there aren't a lot of like young DJs, like, well, at least I don't know them. So maybe there are a lot of them out there. Mnet itself tried to make hip hop really prominent in Korea by starting up this program, Show Me The Money. So they thought it would work for Headliner too. So they got a lot of, you know, fancy people um, to sign up for it. And they had judges there to judge them, judge their mix sets and stuff. But they really realized that well, I hope they realize that that's not gonna work for every single genre they try it out for. Because Headliner, I have heard that it isn't doing that well in the scoring rating charts of the viewing yeah, stuff. I don't know if you guys watched Headliner, but it's a little messy. It's like seeing Show Me The Money Season 1, where they had no idea what they were doing. So maybe Headliner in the future, if more episodes come about and more seasons come about, will become more... Dandane. Dandane, yeah. I heard there's another show program starting after I'm Pretty Rapster 2 that has 101 Yonsub Singer, like trainees from different companies, 42 different entertainment companies or something. I saw it in like an article somewhere that they're starting up this thing and they're gonna have a survival program and choose 10 people to create a unit and have them, you know, participate in different activities for a year and then split them up. Wow, and that I don't know how they're gonna pull that off, but if they do, then it's going to be pretty, you know, successful if all these companies come in and try to promote their uh, members. I'm um, Pretty Rapster Season 2 only had around like 14, what, 13 people in the process and it was still so hectic with so many people. I don't know how they're gonna do it with 101 girls, but you go, Mnet. Fighting. So this has been my insight on Korean show programs and Korean um, survival programs. The reason why they're different is I'm Pretty Rap Star originally wasn't a survival program. It was just a show program, but it changed as they kept on eliminating people in the process. So some of these show programs are on the borderline of being a survival program. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. 
And if you guys want me to talk about anything in more specific, talk about anything more specifically, then I hope you guys leave in the comments down below and ask me, you know, talk about the devil's editing or talk about, you know, how the competitors do afterwards or how they are in the scenes. And I'll be sure to be back to give you the insight on that. Thank you for watching this episode of K-Pop 101 and I'll talk to you guys next time.